Um. <laughs> okay, good. Um, if I speak too close to the microphone, let me know. If I speak too far away from the microphone, let me know. Okay? It's really hard to hear from here how well you can hear. Um, if you're worried about missing Sean's talk about moose rolls, it, it, the slides are available. So don't worry too much. Worst case, I'll give it to you the gist of it in the hallway. You said I got it right, so it's cool. Um, this is the practical dancer um, talk, which basically means let's move some CGI code away into dancer and see how it's used. How many people here use dancer? That is impressive. How many people here thought about using dancer? Inversely. Nice. Okay. So people are not afraid of raising their hands. That's good. So I could give the next one. See, I thought that would be self-explanatory, but then again, I, I do want to explain why I'm giving this talk. There are a lot of dancer talks and very good ones by people who are better than me, and um, I still thought about giving another practical talk. The reason is that, of course, lots of dancer talk, they're showing really cool stuff and how to start, and then and I even had a talk on everything until you hit Hello World in Dancer, which was really cool. But most of us, we really do know how to program already. We know how to do that. Some of us have written programs already. Some of those programs are written CGI PM, which you know that I love. The question is, what can Dancer really do for me? So the, why move to Dancer? If some of you already thought of doing this, already made that decision, then this probably won't apply that much unless you don't know how to explain it to other people who ask you why you move in it and you just don't know how to answer. But for those that are still not convinced why you should move your CGI code to Dancer, I'm not focusing on moving modulistic code to Dancer or Gifty code to Dancer or, well, I think Gifty is on CGI now, so yeah, still. But like Catalyst code to Dancer, I'm not going to talk about that, but why move your CGI code to Dancer? First of all, you rewrite ugly, it could be pretty, it probably isn't, but it's most likely ugly code to Dancer and Beautiful code, and this is something that you need to know beyond the realm of, of Dancer itself. Beautiful co code is code people want to touch. It's code people want to get back to. It's code you will want to get back to. If it's old, crufty, disgusting code, you're not going to want to touch it anymore, and no one will want to touch it anymore after you leave it. So it's really important to have good, clean, pretty code. We have shiny syntax. We have very useful keywords, which explain intent very well. We have very helpful plugins that I'll go through some. We're using, obviously, PGI goodness, PSGI goodness. So that means you have middleware and you have some good responses and you can really play with stuff. And if you haven't seen the CGI PMS die talk, maybe you'd like to see that. So what do we need to consider when we move to Dancer? First thing, path resolution, which also is called pretty URLs, and parameters. In Dancer, the parameters are implicit. In CGI, the parameters are explicit, which means that when you're writing CGI code, you're actually showcasing what your parameters are, which is really ugly. Let me give you an example. What, is someone trying to speak to me or babbling to themselves? All right. Um, okay, if you want to talk to me, just raise your hand so I can see you're trying. Um, so, okay, if you look at the example before there, you can see that the page equals article and ID equals five. So page here is the variable that you're using and ID is the variable that you're using, which means you're explicitly stating what your variables are. You can see in the after that you do not see the variables, the parameters in the path. The user does not need to see that. In the second example is much clearer because you're implicitly saying these are the parameters that I use, but you're explicitly stating where you want to go. And there's a major difference here. The first one does not say where you want to go. It gives the variables. The second one says where you want to go, which is very important for the users. Easy to remember, easy to use. And it's much easier for you to handle. Yes? You basically only got one type of 
Okay. Basically, Dancer will work with the first one as well. It will work with the first one by using, um, you still get the parameters in the first one. The, the difference is that you should care about positional parameters, and that's a good point. You should care about positional parameters, because having no positional parameters is much harder for the user to use. And it makes your application, what's the difference of not being clear? <laughs> Very non-understandable. Not understandable. All right, this is for an example for CGI. Um, you can see that we're using CGI new and we're getting a page through the page parameter. Then we check if the page is an article. Then we check if we got an ID. We have an else if we didn't get ID. If the page is not an article, it, maybe it's a subject, and then we look for an ID again. And there's the else there, and there's another else there, and then there's another else there. I know. <laughs> I know, right? So this is how it looks in Dancer. You get article ID, subject ID, you're done. And the ID here is a variable being substituted. Whatever is inserted there, slash article slash something, that will be your ID, and you can get that from the parameter. Same for subject, we're done. The difference is amazing. Excuse me, what? Will this also work on the old URL formatting? Yes. If, no, it changes the formatting. The user doesn't access sla like slash, question mark, page, something. It will work. It, it, it will, no, actually, in this case, it will not work because you're stating that the article is not a parameter. Yeah, I, know, I know, but if you. If you do a get slash and then try to get the parameters for page, an ID, that could work. Maybe you can change the server like you move from CGI to Dancer, but the applications on the other side don't move. They still uh, query the URL in the old way. To query the URL in the old way, you're going to have to get a slash. That means give me slash, and then give me the parameters for page and for ID, and then you could forward it to this. But you want to change it. You don't want to keep the old way. There's a major significance to that. The user does not want that either. I promise you. I assure you, the user does not want a question mark and a bunch of shit in there. It's just, it's not all at the same time. This is not a discussion or a war forum. Yes, that needs updating, like your code. You could have a shim there. You could. You can have a rewrite rule. The pretty URLs were initially implemented using rewrite rules because CGI was stupid and still is, by the way. Your comment? Yes, you could provide a shim there to fix them up using the get slash. Like I said, that would work. Um, that will work. You could put in rewrite. There's a lot of ways to provide that. All right, automatic parameter checking, first of all, which is very important. You can see that in, these, in this version, I have to check for the page, I have to check for the ID, I have all these else's there, and it's very important. And of course, in none of those else's can I die, because if I use die, I return an exit code that is not zero, and then the server, whatever it is, thinks that everything crashed, and then it gives the user a 500. If you ever encounter that, you have to exit zero. So, and you still need to report it somehow, so you have to have a subroutine there that will do the exit zero and whatever error reporting you have. Also, it's more succinct and much more readable. Less code, which means less room for bugs. You don't want a lot of code, ever, at all. Some flexibility there. We can have an ID there with a question mark which says, maybe there's an ID, maybe not. It's possible. I can do two paths. I can do slash article and slash article colon ID. But I can do them at the same time if I want to. Here's a before for testing the ID. I can do if I get an ID, if the ID is a number, then I can do some stuff. So I get another if in there. In Dancer, I can just use regular expressions because, bless you, I can just use regular expressions because Dancer uses Perl and Perl is awesome, so I can just do that. Of course, after the QR here, I can use an X and then expand it, so it would be nicer. This is pretty cool. 
Uh, the splat keyword here, for whoever is watching and does not know, whenever you use regular expressions and you want to get whatever is it captured, we use splat. OK? And it returns a list, so we put it in the list context. OK. So what else do we need to consider? Separated views. See, CGIPM doesn't promote separation of design. Originally, what we had was the CGI programmer, whoever it was, he wrote the design as well. Nowadays, this is a different concern. Someone else writes the design. Someone else writes the HTML. Someone does the JavaScript. Someone does the wireframe. A lot of people are involved now, and you cannot put your design into the code because the person doesn't know your code and should not be touching your code. And CGIPM does not promote that. In fact, CGIPM, uh, CGIPM is so against it that it actually has functions to create the HTML code, which is insane. So you can see a lot of CGI applications that are simply littered with HTML and CSS, which is stupid and ugly. And you shouldn't do that. Dancer, however, promotes separating these concerns properly. We do that using templates. We provide a layout structure under any template engine. So if you've used a template engine, usually you want to put everything inside a layout. So you have the main layout and then some content built inside of it. And you want to render the content each time with that same frame above it or around it. So Dancer provides that layout structure even though you might want to use a um, template engine that does not support it. For example, Template Tiny cannot do that. Template Tiny cannot render content within content. But we do provide that automatically. Let's take a look at views in Dancer. You have a views directory. That's a default. You can change that. You have a template keyword. You cannot change the keyword. And you provide variables, possibly overriding the layout if you want to. It looks kind of like this. Template, index. Index actually goes in to index.tt in the views directory. You could use some different extension. You could use my extension is HTML or TT2 or whatever it is. And it will render that. And the next thing is the variables. So you have a variable name, and you have some more variables. That's it. This is a bit of a more complicated example where I use the index, but I also add another hash reference, which controls some of the template variables for the rendering the template. In this case, it asks to change the layout to mobile. Perhaps your mobile layout has a different HTML tag at the top, and a different and removes the JavaScript at the end, or whatever you have, which is really cool. You can put their layout on def, and then you have no layout, which is very useful. There's a plugin for mobile devices, which detects mobile devices automatically and changes the layout. That's an example for something very useful. What else? Reusability. Reusability is very important in web. CGI doesn't like that. We promote usability as much as we can, of course. And we provide multiple routes. And you can separate them by purpose if you want to. You can load them into the main application or into several applications. Here's an example of using the prefix keyword. The prefix keyword says, under slash admin, I have the following. And then I have slash view, slash view, slash ID, whatever you want. And that will control only slash admin. I can put this inside admin.pm and load that in the main application. And then I can just work on admin.pm. Another thing to consider, plugins. Plugins are a form of refactoring. That's very important to note. <clears throat> We have a vibrant, warm community, a very fuzzy community. If you go to the IRC channel, people don't swear. Well, you're allowed to swear, but not at each other. And people are very nice, very helpful. And the community often helps people who don't know Perl at all. So we do get people who come in and say, I want to use Dancer. I don't know Perl. And we start working them through it. So it's pretty, it's pretty good. Rays of sunshine, rainbow cookies. Anything that's good and beautiful and nice and pretty, and that's, that's our community. We obviously have a lot of plugins that are written mostly by community members. We ourselves wrote very little plugins. The community wrote most of them. And they cut down a lot of your work. For example, database handling for SQL, NoSQL, ORMs, SMS sending, email sending, LDAP, forms, RSS feeds, internationalization, Profiling using NYT Prof, caching, email sending, sitemaps, plenty more. And you can write your own. 
So oftentimes this helps with a lot of the code that you already have written. You can just push in the database handling for ORM and you no longer have to write your get schema function. I'll show an example of that. Emails, you don't have to write your own email sender. There already is one already configured to use the answer automatically. Same thing with profiling and caching. Really cool stuff. Do I have email twice? I have email twice. Damn it. All right, never mind. So let's look at some code. This is an application that is in production. I cannot tell you what HCB actually means. If you're interested, ask me later. I did not write this, but I was kind of in charge of revising some of it and cleaning it up. You can see that there's a usage for CGI, template, file slurp, spec, base name, whatever. It uses a library hard-coded under lib. There's a schema, so we are using DBX class, which is pretty good. It's pretty modern. And there's functions separated from the CGI. And you can see a create page function, a process CGI params function. We get the schema using a function over there that's defined in HCB functions. And we call the CGI object. And then we print the headers, because you have to print the headers, especially if you want UTF-8, which means you want to support other languages other than English. This is used for uh, a website that has a lot of different languages. And then we run process CGI params. Process CGI params actually takes the CGI object, takes the schema, tries to find out why you want, what you want it to do, and then calls the proper create page, which then gets everything it needs to print you our page. So far, so good. Does this seem like something you recognize from your applications if you wrote CGI? Yes. All right. All right. This is create page. Um, it basically gets the CGI, the schema, a template file, template variables, a folder, and then it creates a new template engine using template toolkit. And there's a include path, relative, absolute. That's not very good. And it processes it, and then it dies. Can anyone see the first problem here? No one? Really? Thank you. Who said that? Two points. All right. Keep score. Um, so two points die is used. So basically, if I'm not going to render the template correctly, the application will crash with a 500 internal server error. It sucks. And there's an exit there, <laughs> of course. All right. This is how you would rewrite this entire thing in Dancer. This entire thing in Dancer. Template, template files, te template file, template variables. That is it. This creates a new template um, engine. Actually, the template is already created and cached inside Dancer. And that will run the rendering, and that will do the error checking. And everything is already done. That is it. Yes? How do I, as a programmer, uh, get informed when there's an error? Get what? Informed of an error. There, are, there is an exception system in Dancer that you can hook up to. Dancer has an exception system that you can hook up to. Yeah, but so you can raise errors and exceptions if you want. So that's another. I, didn't, I don't cover exceptions here, but there is an exception system. And you can simply say, no, you will not get an HTTP 500. In this case, you will get, uh, well, it depends on your configurations. The answer in development mode shows the errors up front. If not, it shows something else. And you can use some middleware there to debug it. Um, you, would, you would get, in this case, an error that says what the problem is. If it's defined for production, it won't contain any code, so the user doesn't see it. And in your case, you might want to use exception system, the exception system that I'm not, I'm not showcasing in this slide. I'm sorry. So dealing with errors for exceptions, you get an exception system. Internal server error sometimes is good. I agree. So <clears throat> this is pretty cool. All of this condensed to one thing. That's not bad. All right, this is process CGI params. This is the main CGI processing that we want to change. You get the CGI object and the schema. You define variables for template and file and everything. Now, notice that we define template variables and file here, which means that we can just call the template here. We don't really need create page. We can just use template, 
whatever the file is and the variables, and we're done. That also means we don't need those variables. So you remove two variables, an entire subroutine. That's pretty good. Now we get the page there, check for menu, check for item, handle errors. Let's, let's expand this quite a bit. How's this? This is the actual function. I am not shitting you. This is the function. I know what you're thinking. I know, I know. But let's, let's look at that anyway. Um, we have the page from a parameter, then we have a menu, then we have an action, which, and the action is either add, edit, or delete. And then we have an item, and that item has a menu ID, and then there's an action, which is add, edit, or delete. And all of those else's. I'm cutting a lot of code here for you. You should thank me. So can we handle it using Dancer? The question is, what do we have here, basically? We have a slash menu add. We have a menu edit and an ID. We have a menu delete and an ID. That's a basic crud there. We have item and then a menu ID and add. Item, menu ID, and edit with the ID that we want to edit. And another one for delete. That's basically what we have here. This is answer code. That is it. You have the menu add, the menu edit with an ID, the menu delete with an ID, the menu uh, the item, menu ID, add, edit, and delete with item ID. That is it. That's it. That's all there is to it. So I wonder, can we, can we improve on this? So we have menu, and then add, edit, or delete, and only two of those have an ID. So maybe we want an ID with a question mark. And we have the same thing with item. So we can do this thing. We can use regexes. How about this? Kind of nuts. Of course, for readability, we can use the X operator for the regexes, X modifier, and do some stuff. And of course, I had to go nuts completely. This does all of those. Why not? Obviously, don't write this code. Do not write this code. Unless you're doing a slide and you want to go nuts. So where were we? Right. Oh, yeah. This thing. Here is another example. I have a prefix for menu, and inside it I have add, edit, and delete, and another for item. This is very readable. This is contextual, which means that the prefix does not change your application. It is bound to that subroutine inside of it. Very useful. And that means we can also cleanly separate it into different files. So I can have a menu.pm, which has a prefix menu and whatever I want underneath or a prefix menu and a sub and everything inside of it. All of those would work. So basically, this is the majority of what I have to say. I do want to reserve more time because people have a lot of questions they ask me, and I wanted to use this time for it, and also showcase some other stuff. Um, the main idea here is that CGI is very old. And it's, it was very useful before we noticed the amount of different jobs there are and different considerations that we have. And suddenly it's all mushed together and it's unmaintainable and it's ugly and it's hard even for us to maintain it because suddenly we realize we want to change the HTML but we don't want to stuff it inside prints or we don't want to put it inside <coughs> rendered PHP. PHP, for example, is a, funny, a very funny thing where they have uh, a rendered HTML file that then you render using a PHP block, which then opens a different file for the template of the HTML. It's like totally backwards. And what we want to do is have a very clean way of writing applications, which separates our different concerns, such as your views and your share files, that is um, public files, like your HTML, your uh, JavaScript and CSS, whatever. And to bind that into PSGI, meaning we have middlewares there, <clears throat> very comfortable. And that's just an example of modern Perl. You can use other modern frameworks, but please just use one of those. And uh, this is how we would use the answer for some of the situations you encounter. Does anyone have questions? Because people have asked me things. Yes? Right, let me give you an example. 
I don't know if I have this installed, so I will run a new C here. Of course, I use DuckDuckGo. Let's do a search. All right, I'm going to start with one, and then I'm going to start with the other one. You were talking databases, right? Is that okay? Stuck to go working today. There it kind of sucks. What? I'm sorry. It's a network here. It's a network, isn't it? There we go. All right. I'll start with this, and then I'll move up to this. All right. Yeah. So I'm get, getting excited. Okay. So. This is the database plugin. It's very useful. It was written by one of the core developers called David Precious, Big Presh. And this allows you to do database handling where the configuration is actually saved inside the Dancer config. You define everything you want in the Dancer config, and then you have the database keyword. We can just use param uh, prepare there and execute using the parameters and fetch row, and everything is being done, including the DBI connect and all of that. And then he added the quick insert, the quick select, quick methods that allow you to do just for this, this is really nice, database, quick select, users, information, done. And that does the connection, that does the prepare, that does the execute, uses placeholders, all of that. It's very cool, very nice. And this cuts down a lot of code. A lot of ugly, disgusting code. I'll give you another example. Any questions about this? All right. Another example is this. It was written by Navid Masjuni. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And the DBIC connects DBIX class. If you're using some modern Perl, you might be using DBIX class. And DBIX class is an ORM. Who here does not know what DBIX class is? It's okay, don't be shy. No one, awesome. So this is what it does. It connects DBI class. You configure everything you want inside your configuration, and it just loads everything up, whether you want it to be, um, what's it called, uh, automatic schema loader, the schema loader, or use an actual schema. Here's an example of how you define things. See, default there. You can define multiple databases, of course. See, there you go. Raise error, print error, whatever you want. And then you can just use these and the schema keyword up there, get results set for user, find, done. Kills a lot of code with this one. And then you get everyone testing your, like if you're using this, you're removing your code for creating the schema and everything, and that code is actually now in this, which means that a lot of people are testing it and not just you. So that's very important, that's refactoring basically to using plugins. You would know in URL switch delete something, uh, slash delete, slash item 400. Yes. Uh, but not anyone who uh, recognizes URLs like this should delete something. Uh, when, when my customer sees, okay, there's a delete action, I try delete 2000, what happens? Uh, not everyone is allowed to delete something. Uh, especially non-authorized uh, users. Okay, uh, so you're talking about an authorization system. To intercept and uh, log in uh, to the application. Well, what you want is a session. I'll give you an example in actual code. All right, let's get some syntax highlighting going. Oh, this is an, an event example. Let's see. All right, so suppose you have, and it's gone. All right. Can everyone see this? Is it? Yes? All right. I'll resize it a bit more. All right. So suppose you have your basic sub here. You can have um, a post for the login, OK? Which means people do a post. OK. <clears throat> what you can do here is get their details, let's say, name from the params. 
And then you can create a cookie, for example. Um, wait. Um, no, you create a session. Let me show you the syntax for this. Session would be the easiest. This is the basic object. I don't think this shows the actual. Yeah, all right. No, this is for controlling the session engine. Let's go here. Documentation is always important. We have a no bad Firefox. All right. All right. So this is a session keyword. It's a good example, better than I'm going to write with one hand. You can see here that you can use the session keyword in order to create a session. <clears throat> and that will retain information. Now, there are different, Dancer has this thing where we wanted to abstract as much as we could into a basic engine that you can then create different um, implementations of that engine for. So, for example, <clears throat> the session is basically a keyword that gives you, damn you, ah. All right, never mind. Computer skills minus minus. All right. So if you look at the number of denser sessions, you can see there's DBI, PSGI, Cookie, Chi, <clears throat> which is a caching system, MongoDB, Memcache, KyokuDB, JSON, Elasticsearch, Storable. These are all ways to keep the session. You're using the same keyword but you can configure any one of these engines. And the previous example, which was somewhere around here, there we go, shows you how to create sessions. The actual, I think this variable here is probably not right, but the session keyword here, you just session, you give some sort of variable and some value to it, and then you can actually check this using this and even fetch that information. Very simple. And that session can be implemented in PSGI, in a cookie, encrypted cookie actually, um, in KyokuDB, in JSON, in YAML files, and whatever you want. It's pretty cool. Same thing goes with templates. Dancer supports an insane amount of templates, and it's so easy to write more templates for Dancer. And your keyword stays basically the same. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have clicked that. So you have Camel, Hamel, MicroTemplate, CT, PP2, Xlate, Tengen. We support the Mojo template. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Flute, Tiny, HTML, uh, is that, yeah, HTML template, Mason 1 and 2, Semantic, Sandbox, Declare. It's, it's very easy to write them. Um, let me show you the alloys here as well. The Tiny is incredibly, hilariously funny how simple it is. This is how you create a template for Dancer. That's it. Stupid simple. So does that, does that answer the question? All right, any other questions? Yes, the guy in the back with the orange shirt. Louder. That's a good question. I've, she I've, I've uh, shown you uh, um, get and post, right? Dancer has more than get and post. It's kind of not nice of me to just show one of those, but. So there's get, post. Um, I don't think we have it in a single. There's basically all of the main HTTP um, verbs, but we also have any that's up there. You can see any. And what any does is provide you with either all of them or one or more of them. So you can have like a get that has, an any that has both get and post and does something, or you can have an any on everything, which is pretty cool. Um, forward, you might be interested in. Uh, forward. 
forward, what it does is redirect a request internally. So you can, this is something I've actually done in production. It's very, very useful. I had um, a client that said, I want to have another website. I want to have the same website, but with a, a test website. And then you have to set up a whole new system for it and maybe even replicate the code because you don't want this code touching that code and it's tricky. Instead, what I did is have two databases and whenever she does slash demo, whatever it is, I change the main database lexically and then I forward it to articles. I can do this completely dynamically with slash demo whatever using Megasplat, which is another feature that we have but this was before Megasplat. So it's very, very simple to do internal forwarding. You authenticate a user, you send, them, you send them along to Slash. Now they're authenticated. You don't have to use redirect even. You just forward them along and they make one request to you which both authenticates them and gives them the main page under whatever it is. And the, the, the feature here which is a good thing, is that it retains the original, um, the original path. So in your case, probably not as good as just redirecting them, but in this case, she still sees slash demo slash articles, but someone, some other route is actually handling it, which is very useful. Um, there's four and redirect, of course. Here, redirection. <coughs> very simple. And this is what users, where was this? The Australian guy, yes, you, this is for you. You can use redirect on a path that is for the users and redirect them internally to where you want them to actually go. And they still see the same path and they still use the same path and they get a simple redirect. So let me um, ask, uh, just go over the documentation a bit, check it out. There's for some odd reason my face here. I just released the thing. <clears throat> so yeah, there's a lot of functions here and examples. Serializers, we have a lot of serializers like that. So creating a REST application, for example, is two seconds long. Um, I, think, I think we're done, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> yes, you. Yeah, we're done. Using an existing uh, library, uh, using uh, just a regular expression to, to fix that, to fix that, uh, to fix that, so I don't need to get it off. And uh, the session, for example, I use slash session, and I ended up only using slash to my application, but not, not, uh, I don't need the answer. So my question is, All right, um, I'm not sure I follow completely what you're saying, but I might be. It's not here, okay, sec. That's a lot of documentation. Yes, it is good. Config, okay. Inside the configuration, this shows you how to configure stuff. Example here. Where is the example for middlewares? Damn it. Oh. There you go. Okay. So if you're already using Plaque, this talk obviously isn't for you. 
because you're not running CGI code. But if you're using Plaque and you still want the answers shiny syntax and everything, and you don't want to write PSGI, raw PSGI, you can still use Plaque middlewares very easily. This is an example of how you set up middlewares. You can either do in your code using set Plaque middlewares and then give some middlewares with their options, or you can use a configuration. And this is an example of how to set up a debug panel, a debug uh, screen, and then some panels for it for DBI trace, memory, and timer, and all of that which is fairly simple. Of, of course, if you have some defaults, you don't have to put all of this in. But you can add plaque middlewares into Dancer very seamlessly. It's very, very, very easy. So you can have a clean layer. Of course, with PG, PSGI, you can set up different paths to different things. And you can have a path that goes to your PSGI application and a path to go, that goes to your Dancer application that maybe uses plaque middleware also. You can go nuts. Dancer basically tries to stay out of your way. You can even use event loops with that. You can write the Dancer any event thing. It works. It works really nice. So, yeah. I hope that answers. Last questions. That guy. You're very far away. Louder. I always wait for this question. What about Catalyst and Mojo? All right. I hope it doesn't leave this room. And the video. The question is, what about comparison with, correct me if I'm wrong, comparison with Catalyst and Mojolicious? All right. Catalyst. Um, all the Dancer core developers and a lot of the community used Catalyst. A lot of us still use Catalyst, and we like Catalyst. Catalyst sometimes is a good choice. Sometimes it might not be the choice for you. I used to write a lot of Catalyst, and I stopped and I started using the answer. It kind of showed me how to write cleaner stuff, very simple stuff, and how a lot of my really big applications don't need to be very big. And that's very important. Then again, sometimes you want Catalyst. You know, that's cool. We like Catalyst. Modulicious is something else. Um, it's a good framework. It's very strong. It's very fast. It has a, a lot of shiny bills. <coughs> and maybe you'd like to use that one, too. We're OK with that. It's cool. That's, that's basically how we see everything. So I personally didn't like Modulicious. I checked it out before I got into Dancer. I actually saw that before I saw Dancer. I'm a core developer, but I did not start as a core developer. And um, I tried it out. I looked at it. It wasn't for me. I really, really like the community of Dancer, the developer, and the, the rest of the core developers. It's a very warm community. And I like things, how things are done there. And that's why I joined and became a core developer. But if you want to use Mojo, that's cool. I don't really harbor no strong feelings. And I'll see you outside at 4 for a Rumble match. That's about it. Is that good enough? OK, cool. Thank you.